A new Xbox console is coming. Something that Xbox fans have demanded for a long time is finally happening. Oh man, there's a lot here to talk about in this video, so let's get into it. What's up everyone, it's randolph 19 the man with the million, back again with another video. Make sure you guys do me a huge favor, hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. And let's just dive into today's topics. I've compiled a whole bunch of different things that have been happening in the world of Xbox over the last week or so. We have a brand new Xbox console finally being announced. We have something that Xbox gamers have demanded for like two years now that is leaking and we expect to launch sometime soon. It's about damn time. There's a new dashboard update as well. I do have to talk briefly about why it seems that anytime there's Xbox information, there's always certain people in the social sphere who will take whatever it is and try to spin it negatively it happens all the time with any sort of news story that happens and we've seen it happen recently with two different things which prompted people to delete tweets remove their likes essentially make themselves look like asses and it happens consistently but it's a broader topic of why the first reaction to something is always the most negative thing and that really only happens in the realm of Xbox. I understand that Xbox didn't have a great year last year. I understand that they're not looked at like PlayStation or Nintendo. Both of those companies always seem to get the benefit of the doubt when it comes to news, especially news that could be construed to be bad. But when it comes to Xbox, the first thought is attack. We saw it last year with the Fable rumor that took the internet by storm and everybody was saying, you know what? This is true because Xbox sucks. Of course Fable's restarting development because they can't make any games. It's a weird phenomenon that I've seen rear its ugly head time and time again almost every single year. So what are these two scenarios that happened recently I'm talking about? Well, it was pointed out by Xbox in the usual games that are leaving Game Pass. That Quantum Break, an Xbox exclusive, a first party IP, even though it's developed by Remedy, Xbox owns that IP, it was leaving Game Pass. And this prompted a whole bunch of questions, a whole bunch of hate being like, why is Quantum Break leaving? It's a first party game. Is this a sign that Game Pass is going down the tubes? What is going on? We need answers. And level headed people are like, don't worry, I'm sure they're working on getting it fixed. There's probably something to do with the licenses because that game used licensed music tracks, but still people were going on this narrative that something bad was going to happen. Well, of course, the people that are level-headed and use logic to think these things through are right because Remedy tweeted out and said, don't worry, Quantum Break will be coming back to Game Pass. It is being temporarily removed due to some licenses that expired that were in the process of being renewed. We will let you know as soon as it is back. But it wasn't just Quantum Break that got a lot of people's panties in a twist, so to speak. It was the Xbox Game Pass Family Plan, which has launched in about eight different countries. It is not launched here in the United States, and people are wondering, hey, what is the price going to be? Well, a user took a screenshot and said, hey, look, I can access Game Pass Family Plan. It says one month for $39.95. And not only did this spark a lot of outrage, even though the deal is good, it's not as good as the rumored $25 price point that it was supposed to be at. I mean, five accounts for Game Pass Ultimate at $15 a month is 75 bucks. This would have been 40, so you're still saving $35. But this caused a bunch of different articles to be written about the service saying that this was gonna be the price point. PlayStation fans were using this as ammo somehow against Xbox Game Pass and how, oh, must not be making any money if they're charging this. All these sort of different conspiracy theories regarding the service. And it was all based on a screenshot of somebody who turned their console to New Zealand to play Resident Evil 4 early. And that price point, $39.95, was for the New Zealand. And if you actually convert New Zealand currency to the US, it would be 25 bucks. But once again, people had to delete tweets and undo their likes because the first instinct for a lot of people is to spread bad Xbox news, even if there isn't any. And you know what? I'm sick of it. I don't know about you guys. Like the video 
and subscribe if you're sick of all this nonsense. Now, let us get into the juicy leaks. And this first one is something that Xbox gamers have been demanding, talking about since the launch of the console in 2020. And that is new SSD solutions, because right now, the only way to get storage expansion is through Seagate and their prices have remained exceedingly high ever since the launch of the console. You have a one terabyte SSD card that basically goes for 200 bucks. You have a two terabyte one that is $400 more than the cost of the Xbox Series S. So while Xbox fans enjoyed how easy it was to plug it into the console, they were looking enviously at PlayStation fans because Sony let you buy and install your own M.2 solutions. And those prices have dropped dramatically. And Xbox fans are asking, you know what? We deserve some competition in this space. And it looks like it's finally happening because Microsoft appears to be readying new Xbox expansion storage options from other manufacturers. A new Western Digital 1TB expansion card for Xbox Series X and S consoles has been spotted early on Best Buy priced at $179.99. Now this is great. This is exactly what we need. We need more competition in this space to bring those prices down. So we have Seagate, Western Digital is looking to jump in. Hopefully there's another competitor that will jump in and drop the prices even further. Most likely what happened was that Microsoft and Seagate had signed an exclusive contract where Seagate was the only supplier of the storage expansion cards for maybe two years. Now that deal's most likely up, which is why we are seeing a new entrant into that space. Let me know in the comments below if you're planning on getting this new Western Digital expansion card. Now the other thing that leaked yesterday was a custom, potentially official Xbox Starfield controller. Now we know Starfield is the biggest game of the year for Xbox, one of the biggest games of this year period. And we've been sitting here thinking, is Xbox going to celebrate this? Clearly, they're going to make a custom controller, but some people want a custom Xbox console. And we'll be talking about consoles in just a little bit. So you can see some of the pictures here. Now these pictures leaked online on a Chinese forum. Somebody was able to buy the controllers. People still aren't really sure if this is the official controller or if it's a controller somebody had made. My guess, looking at all the different pictures here, seeing the translucent triggers, I actually really dig this controller. And if it is official, which I'm going to guess it is, I definitely be buying it because I am really looking forward to Starfield. I like the white design. I like the rainbow coming to the guide. If you flip the controller, it's got the red on the battery pack and inside the battery pack, it says for all into the Starfield. So I'm really digging this custom controller. I hope it's legit. I hope it's official. I do believe it is. We know Starfield's coming on September 6th, so I'd imagine if this is true, maybe we see it announced on June 11th during the Starfield Direct. But I know people want a custom console. Xbox really hasn't done many of these this gen outside of Halo Infinite, which they had to. It's Halo. It's their biggest IP even though it's struggling right now. But we did have Microsoft announce a brand new Xbox Series X bundle that features Diablo 4. So in this bundle, you get the Xbox Series X, a wireless controller, the game, clearly, some in-game items, and it's gonna be on sale on June 6th for like 560 bucks, very similar to the Forza Horizon 5 bundle for the same price. Both of these bundles comes with the game, I know a lot of people are a little bit down on this one because it's not a custom console and people are like, well, they're going to be first party, right? Activision Blizzard is more than likely going to be first party, but they aren't first party yet. And Diablo 4 is going to be one of the biggest games of the year. Microsoft has the marketing outside of the whole ABK deal going on. So it makes sense to have a bundle like this. Maybe if circumstances were different, like if the ABK deal was already done, maybe you could make a really badass custom Xbox Series X. But it's really cool to see Microsoft start doing this again because they really haven't this entire generation. And they really didn't leverage it a lot during the Xbox One generation. So here you have the Diablo 4 Xbox Series X bundle. But I'll bring my question up when we talked about the Starfield controller. Is Xbox going to make a custom Starfield console? 
They're first party. They've been first party for some time now. People are going to jump into the Xbox ecosystem to play Starfield. They're going to play it on Game Pass, whether it's on PC or Xbox. To me, you have to make a custom Xbox Series X and maybe even a Series S for Starfield. It's the biggest new IP that Xbox is putting out basically since Gears. I would say bigger than Gears since Halo. It deserves to have a custom Xbox Series X. But will it happen? I don't really know because it certainly seems that Xbox is having some supply issues with getting the Xbox Series X out to stores across the world. But then I thought they weren't going to be able to do one for Halo and they clearly did. So maybe they are planning on doing one for Starfield. And you know what? If I'm a betting man, I would say there's a good chance that they would reveal it during the Starfield Direct. I would really like to see what they could come up with and I know a lot of people would like a custom Starfield Xbox Series X. Now, last but not least, we do have an update to the Xbox dashboard for people in the alpha and skip ahead rings. And it revolves around the friends and community updates. Now, the new dashboard really isn't anything special. It's just an iteration of the same dashboard we've seen for quite some time. I'm not really a fan of how they have a block of content whether it's top free games or recently added to Game Pass before your pins, clearly they're pushing an agenda about we need to get Game Pass in front of more people. So the new dashboard layout, I'm not necessarily a big fan of, but they're adding this friends and community update channel, which will bring together all the top things from your activity feed. You'll be able to see achievements, game clips, screenshots, and text posts from your friends official clubs or games that you follow. So I actually have this update and I was looking at it last night. There's not really much there. It really showed me three different things. And one of the things it showed me was a clip from a friend that posted it three years ago. So obviously it needs some tweaks, but I don't know if this is really useful to anybody. Maybe it is, but I'm not really impressed with this new dashboard in general anyways. It just is there. Anyways, guys, that's the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about everything in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the Patreon in the description. Love you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.